Uh, welcome to this week's episode of On the Couch, where we are joined by three ladies who need little introduction, the Lacey's. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for having us. No, no bother. Um, I suppose one of the one of the best places to start, as we start most of the interviews, is at the beginning. Margaret, what can you remember about your earliest memories of playing camogie or of any sport? Um, well, <coughs> it's a fairly long time ago now, <laughs> when I started, and um, I I came from. Um, Monoma Lynn, which, uh, which would be part of the Buffett's Alley Club. And um, in those years, um, do, there wouldn't have been any Camogie Club in uh, Buffett's Alley at that particular time, mm. earlier years. And um, then <coughs> my father and a few other fellas, um, John Doyle, he was a priest at that time in Monoma Lynn, and Tom Butler and a few of them, Sil Murphy was another man that was there. And um, they formed the club and they got going then and, you know, we used to play a uh, field, uh, what we called at the back of our Haggard at home. And there was times, and especially uh, at weekends, there could be up to 40 um, young girls like playing there and we had we had so many there that we used to run tournaments up there. It used to be ten aside, maybe. My father would have one team, and John Doyle would have another, and Tom Butler and Sil Murphy maybe would have another. And they were little all Ireland's every weekend. That was what I remembered. I'd even remember them better nearly than any all Ireland's I played in. Yeah. Because it was so competitive. Nobody wanted to lose. You know, that was... One of the things. A good start off. And, and Mary, what are your earliest memories then? Um, I suppose my earliest memory of actually holding the hurl was um, at the gable end of our home house. Um, Mammy, ironically enough, was inside making tarts and me and Una were outside and the two of us were trying to learn how to pick up the ball. And I remember Una, who was only maybe, well, two years younger. Two and a half. <laughs> she was nearly getting it. And I was like panicking because she was nearly able to pick up the ball before I was able to pick it up. Um, so that was probably my um, earliest memory. Um, probably my earliest memory of playing with Owlert um, was in an under 10 um, final. I was actually um, Mammy and and Carvin and the late Aidan Moore and they ran a tournament within the club and I remember we ended up in the in the final of it and we were playing Blackwater and I remember in the first half I got hit on my finger and I tried to play on, I did play on too but I remember after the match I would hardly talk and my, or say a speech because my finger was so sore so I ended up in our team with a broken finger but um, the shows at that age, I suppose I was mad for Camogie. I wouldn't go off. So that was probably my earliest memory of actually playing with the club. Um, yeah. And you know, if I had asked you before, Mary, would you have said the same about the the hurling at the gable wall or something different? Well, I know I would remember, like you know, growing up that we would have been always out hurling or even if it wasn't hurling, we'd have two chairs out in the tennis net and you'd be playing tennis and sure. I think Serena and Venus were big at the time, so. Um, but then I suppose I remember, you know, growing up, going to, being dragged to the pitch, and cause I know Mammy would have been involved with teams, and I think even being down here in Wexford Park, I'd say I must have been only really, really young, but it, um, I was behind the goal, and the ball came over. So, um, I say this was the early nineties, and well, I end up getting a black eye from the ball hitting me in the eye. <laughs> oh and I suppose you know, from going around to different matches and whatever, we we're always going to be interested in playing. So, mm. yeah. yeah. And Margaret, the game of camogie was a very different game when you would have started playing it, and when you were playing it, I suppose when you were winning the All Irelands in the sixties, to what it is now. There were lots of different rules and and things like that. Yeah. There was, there was um, first and foremost, there was there was only twelve aside, and the pitches were smaller, and the goalposts, um, you had a crossbar, but you had another top crossbar, mm. and you had to get uh, score points then between the two crossbars. That was why <coughs> there was never um, uh, too many points scored. Mm. This was difficult enough to score, and. Um, 
at that time, then, you know, there'd be no such thing as, you know, uh, girls going out and uh, the uniform at that time was absolutely crap. <laughs> You know, it was more of a hindrance. Right? Yeah, well, yeah. it was uh, more of a hindrance than a help to you. To, you know, in playing, and of course, uh, as well as I, if you got uh, a smack if, or anything, you, you just had to get on with it. You know, because um, there was a bottle of water. All right, that was nearly the main cure, mm -hmm. because there was no first aid bags or anything like that. No helmets, no um, shin guards, no anything. At that particular time, you were kind of just told, just unless you were really badly injured, you were just told, get on with it. Uh, it was like you that know? for us growing up along as well. <laughs> <laughs> no sympathy. <laughs> yeah, but even but, in the length of time you've been playing Camogie, it's had a few different rule changes as well, hasn't it, Mary? Yeah, I suppose. Um, I think Camogie, I suppose, has been a bit controversial as well. Like different referees interpret different rules, different ways. Because um, you could have some referees to let everything go, be really physical. And I suppose that's brilliant for the spectators. Um, I think it was two years ago, I suppose, they got rid of the hand pass. And so um, you couldn't hand pass the ball into the net. Um, I suppose it's probably better for the viewing of the game. Um, also, they um, introduced kind of, it's not really a shoulder, but more physical wasn't it that you could kind of brush off there and play? Was contact. Yeah, there was contact. Um, again, I suppose it's better for the game. As in, I suppose the speed of the game is improves a big time. You're not stopping and starting. Um, yeah, that's really it, isn't it? Yeah, and the the, the drop, you mentioned the hand pass and the score, but dropping the hurl the hand pass has also been outlawed yeah. recently as well. That's it? the most annoying rule. It's like sometimes I remember this year. I don't know what match it was, but the ref said, like, oh, you dropped the hurl, and I was like, the hurl was actually pulled out of my oh, hand. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's like, yeah. what it's difference does it make now that the hurl is in my hand? Or, fair enough if I was at the throwing at a player, or, yeah, you know, yeah. something like that, but the hurl, yeah. just a real nice. Throwing, <laughs> throwing the hurl away to get away the yeah. pass, yeah. yeah. But, but mm -hmm. if it's unintentional, or pulled away from you, how you are, yeah. like, yeah. that's kind of a, a pain or a, a silly rule now. Yeah, yeah but the... I suppose you could say like the standard now um, of you know it's after improving so much and <clears throat> like the speed of the game like it's after speeding up an awful lot because mm -hmm. players today like are as a sort of like hurling or football like it's you're professionally trained nearly you know mm -hmm. players are very fit I'm not saying I wasn't fit but <laughs> you know, because but in my time like we there was collective training but <clears throat> I would have done a lot of training on my own you know, so and that, that sort of leads nicely into what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you what were preparations like for a, even a county team or a club team at the time. Well, you see, um, the, the 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 training was there, like, but you know, I mean, it's uh, so much more improved today. Hmm. You know, I mean, this you know more. Uh, you know, with PE and all that kind of thing. But uh, in our day, like, you were doing a lot of running and all that sort of thing, mm. you know, that uh, would have been different. But, um, and a greater focus now, I suppose, on the skills of the game as well. Uh, that goes for hurling and football and camogie and ladies football, that there's just... People seem to be far better... Yeah, but even yeah. the training, like, since we started playing county, it's evolved so much, like, a lot of, um, I suppose trainers that have been involved with some of the top county teams are kind of involved in camogie teams whether it's true like having daughters playing or just getting involved in their clubs like we've been so lucky over the years we've had like a lot of the best of the best over us you know who've won, won loads in the ga kind of um as well and um, so i think that's helping camogie as well and like the, even the difference in the fitness training now, there's so many different elements to your training. Like, do you know, isn't there? Um, even in, was it Jerry McQuaid became involved in 2010 okay. and like, you know, having the cameras for doing fitness tests and mm -hmm. the bleep test and the yo-yo test now, but then the cameras say like, what speed you go over so many meters and you know, for mm -hmm. the longer mm -hmm. distances, mad the like, really, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't have been used to that at all. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, Margaret, before 
you're, you're most associated with Buffers Alley and Outerton when it comes to Camogie, but you also played with a, a club in Dublin and had some All Ireland success up there. I had, yeah, the, the, the clubs. Uh, I was on Raw at the time. It's, um, I was in Dublin and, you know, I, 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 I went to them, I'd say, for maybe about three or four years and we won the league and championship uh, there. We happened to win it and actually, <clears throat> we won a club all Ireland in. I was sixty seven, um, all Ireland, but I was played in sixty eight because we drew. Uh, there was a draw in it, and it was played then in Ballinas Law in the following year, and that was the, the year that Wexford made the breakthrough mm. at county level. Yeah, that was so, the, that was the first year. In, so you you won the all Ireland with own oh, row no, in yeah. sixty seven, and then Wexford, or well, it was in sixty eight, but then yeah. Wexford. Camogie team won the first All Ireland in sixty eight. Sixty eight, yeah. What can you recall of, of that year? Um, it was a hectic year because there were so many teams had won All Irelands that year. I think Peters College they won an All Ireland uh, colleges, and the Miners and the the Harlers won that same year, yeah. and the Camogie team made the tr breakthrough, and we weren't expected at all. We we played. I think it was Antrim up in in Antrim in the semi final and news broke that we were after getting we were after beating them up there and we had got to the final. And so that, and that would have been a big shock because Antrim I think won it the year before didn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. And they were very strong. We were being beaten in, in uh, Leinster by Dublin and Kilkenny. But it just uh, the tables were turned and we started to win and uh, it was the first one was the the big one. You know, but it was a great year. Sixty eight was a great year. Winning uh, two All Ireland. Well, th as it happened, Actually, because yeah. it was sixty sevens. Um, competition. Yeah, 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 and because of the draw, it was played in sixty eight. It's not too many people can say they won two All Irelands in one year. Well, <laughs> it looked it easier. <laughs> But uh, yeah, sure, it was, it was great. It was a great honour like, to play with your county and, and, and win. Absolutely. You know? and, and you managed to follow it up the following year with the second one? In 69, yeah. yeah. And then there was a few drawn away then into the bargain, <laughs> you know, but sure. <coughs> we, yeah, there were some great players, you know, playing with Wexford then. Yeah, who would, who would have been the, the stronger ones at the time or the, the stars at the time that you can remember? Well, Other than yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Asher, there was there was a good few there. The Kios, uh, Bridget, and Kit, and um, who else? Mary Sinnott, Dine, and like she was, she plays to play for back and John Murphy, or other players like that played then. You know, it's gone. It's so long ago now. Like I, I find it hard. Like to be remembering my memory is not good. Like well, <laughs> so. Mary then, when did you break onto the inter-county scene? When did it start for you? Um, God, I don't even know the exact year, but I was actually, I think I was only after going 14 that December. And I remember um, Dan Quigley was over the county set up that year. And I remember he called me in. And I remember I got my first debut then up in Parnell Park again, Dublin. And I remember Dan before the match, she was like to me, now you're a young one, these are going to try to hit you hard, so just be, you know, I suppose, be aware of it. So, yeah, we didn't do too well in that match, but I remember I was delighted because my player I was wing back and she didn't score nothing, so I suppose that's all I really do remember. But I was lucky, I suppose, I remember the likes of Kate, Kelly, there was, who else was there? Um, Orla and... Harnan. Yeah, Orla Harnan. And Michelle Hearn. Yeah, Michelle Hearn. And like, okay. I suppose the three of those women, like, particularly poor Arla. Arla was one of the most dedicated Camogie players in those years when we weren't winning anything. We were lucky to have 15 at training. And, and then I suppose she retired in 2006. And it was 2007 when we made a breakthrough. So I remember actually at the end of 2007 I actually was thinking I was like god she was unlucky you know for a player who was so dedicated she just missed out as well um yeah that was it really um that was the year that you won the all Ireland, wasn't it? yeah 2007 yeah that was the first year I suppose it was the first year kind of a more professional level it was brought into the 
county set up as well. There was a big backroom team. We had a independent trainer and again we were kind of doing early season training I think we started that year and I have a bad memory as well but I do remember it was November that year we started doing running and bleep tests and stuff like that but um yeah that was a brilliant year actually 2007. Stella and Stella. Stella, yeah, Stella. And you were, you were captain. the captain. Yeah, I was the captain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was the captain. Every year. <laughs> but and Alan her, and Alan. Yeah, her. Alan Ahern and was Alan? Oh, and Noel Ryan. How could I forget Noel? Noel. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was Noel, Stella, and Alan. Um, Eddie Flynn. And Eddie Flynn was our trainer. But it was a brilliant year. Um, we golf really well into National League. We got to the final and I remember we played Cork in the league final and the day before there was about four or five of us had to play um the league football final. So we we're you know, it was tough going playing I suppose on Saturday and then on the Sunday. And I think we only lost to Cork that day, if I'm right if I remember right, I think by a point or two. And then we had to turn around. We had the championship, the first round of championship in Cork the following Saturday. And we went down and we won well. So it was great. And it got us off to a great start in the championship. So it was really good. And the way the championship format was that year was actually, you weren't playing the camogie till every two or three weeks. So mm. it was really good for the morale of the team. I can just remember because we were all young. Enough, but we were able to go out after every single game. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Oh, well, you remember that. <laughs> I remember the rounds and I remember it was yeah. like, you know, I suppose that's how I suppose the bond between the team was created as well. So maybe that's missed a little bit in modern. Yeah, because the last yeah. few years we're playing county, it was week on week, you know, every Saturday. Yeah. And then you're playing club championship on a Monday night in between. So, mm. you know, it was just. You know, you couldn't really, I suppose, enjoy any off the field so events, you know. And only you would have been still a teenager at the time that you started, obviously, playing for the Wexford Seniors, but even still a teenager when you won in 2007. Yeah, and I can't even remember when I started playing. I think it was when Dan Quigley was involved, they were stuck for numbers, as Mary said, that like, there was little or there was. Um, small numbers going to train, but I think there was one match that Dan actually rang myself and Mike Sarsi. And the two of us toddled on with him. And then I remember the years with Willie Carley and the late Tommy Kerwin. Um, um, do you remember? Even, I think mm. one weekend we got up at like, I think it was like four o'clock in the morning. We were all meeting down the rave and <laughs> going on a big walk to see this sunrise or sun. Yeah, but sunrise. I remember, sorry for we all missed it anyway. <laughs> no, but I remember we trained a Friday night and Willie said he didn't want anyone to be late, right? And we were all to meet. Remember the tavern? Yeah. In Carclo, and we were all there at half four. And who were we waiting on? I'm waiting on Ollie Willie, remember? Yeah. <laughs> and I think half has got lost through the rain, and so we missed the sunrise. So it was, it was funny. It was funny. I thought it was nice, though. And yeah. um, I suppose just um, you're obviously things are different for both of you now, um, both parents, and you've some, you've two Mary and. You've won and... Won on the way. Yeah, I want to let you say that. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Um, and how has, like, do you think, is it much harder now to kind of come back to training every year or whatever after, do you know, after, how did you find that hard? Well, I, did, back? I didn't find it too bad as in, I, I only go five minutes up the road, like, so it was easy enough to get Mike minded and Barry's mm. hurling, so... His train was on different nights than mine, so it was mm. easy enough. Or Mammy be in the pitch, or mm. Barney, or someone would take mm. him, so it was grand for me. But we used to have to listen to Mary. She was driving halfway from Dublin, that's how we heard every train. It was her coming down. And, but then, in fairness, she was able to bring the two lads. Mammy was always at the pitch, or Bridget mm. Moore was always at training. And mm. she and Bridget and Mammy, they were mine for mm. her, so it wasn't too bad. physically, did you find it hard to come back? You know, was it difficult to come back from... 
Um, well, it wasn't for me either. And Mike was yeah. born in November 2019. Mm. And so then, by the time time things were getting off. back, yeah. next thing COVID hit. And so I had a right break that yeah. I wasn't yeah, rushing yeah. back where she would have. I suppose my two. To rush. Yeah, I, t- my two boys are born in July and championships in August. So not ideal. <laughs> but were you back for both? I was. Oh, God. <laughs> I went about, I think any, I suppose, woman that have had has had or have had a baby would know your body I suppose takes a while to come back to itself so I probably the first year I came back um after having my oldest little lad Jake I did play but I wouldn't have I was struggling big time with my calves seemingly that your ligaments Achilles, yeah, yeah your ligaments are not you know it takes a while for him to I suppose was it to settle down settle down <laughs> And then I suppose when I was pregnant with my, um, I have a fifteen month old, mold, um, little boy Matthew, and um, when I was pregnant with Matthew, I was kind of it worked out like a dream actually. We just won the two thousand and twenty county final, and Leinster was postponed till January because of COVID, and then in November. I suppose I suppose the regulations came in for COVID. The whole country was shutting down, and I was kind of. I remember we were all training online at the time, and I was just. I used to turn the screen up to the roof, and the <laughs> I was training, and then I broke the news to Colin, and Sir Colin was he was very good. He was supportive enough, um, congratulated me and all, but. Then the match was actually cancelled in January and it was put back to the following December. No, so, it was May first. Yeah, but it was, it was put back to May, so she was going to miss it. And then in May, do you remember there was the whole commotion that um they were just scrapping it all together that there was mm. going to be no twenty twenty championship that like mm. the, mm. the start of twenty twenty one and that yeah. was it. And yeah. You started your little protest that yeah. worked then in the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were on Twitter every day saying <laughs> something. It's <laughs> like so it was what? put in December. And at the time when they were doing that, I was like, oh God, like I was happy enough not to go back. Mm. And then when it was put in December and I had Matthew in July, sure, I had to come back. And No excuse. Yeah. It was funny because I actually didn't miss one championship mm. match from the whole year the way it worked out. The way yeah. for COVID, but and you was, came back, was it five weeks? Were you five weeks after? Yeah. Yeah. Five weeks. That's amazing. Like, it's fairly incredible to come back. You know, yeah, yeah. I was madness, really. <laughs> was, was, was there ever any thought in your mind that when you were, I suppose, pregnant that you wouldn't play anymore, or was it always your intention to continue playing? To be honest, I, I don't know about you now, but I was loving life without going training, not being tied down to a commitment. I think anyone would know, like, especially over the years, Kamogi train three, four nights a week, it's a heavy commitment. I mean, I'm in something I would be committed. I wouldn't be missing it. Mm. So I loved being pregnant that way. And then I suppose when I was 20 weeks pregnant, I got really bad at sciatica. I was, I couldn't move, walk for three days. I was kind of bedridden. Right? So I said, definitely won't be going back. But then I suppose you, when you get the pregnancy over it, and the nights, e- long evenings. Mm. and You miss it then. Yeah, well, when you get back into it, you kind of miss mm-hmm. it, you know, once you make, it's hard to go to the first training, but then when you're in it, you're in it, you know. But I think as well is, you know, when you're, when you're expecting, you can't play, so you're kind of like, oh, I don't miss it, and the mm-hmm. minute you're able to play, it's like if you're injured, the minute you're able to play, you do you miss it, it. you yeah. want to play it, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. you're trying to convince yourself, oh, you don't miss it, and I remember even like when I was pregnant on Mike, the girls were in the county final, and... Like, I didn't really miss it up until, you know, when it was the latter stages of the championship. I was like, oh my God, I'd love to be playing now. Like, you know, yeah. you're sitting there looking at them and, yeah. you know, but, yeah. yeah. Um, am I right in saying that the three of you would have played a few matches together? Uh, see, I think it was actually our first senior league final in Park Garmin. Actually, yeah, I do remember that. Mammy yeah. was actually in goal. Uh, I think it was, it was it 2002 or 2003. So you're, you're not that long retired either then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand retirement. <laughs> but they nearly pay her to retire. <laughs> but um, no. You were in goal. Was, it was, she was in goal and maybe we were in the backs and I was in the forwards. I think we played the Ibers then in Park Gorman. Yeah. Did we win that one? I think that was our first we won, was <laughs> yeah. it? I think. I don't, I don't remember much, but I actually do remember that. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm sure that would be a special thing to have remembered that you maybe it's something you mightn't have thought of at the time, but looking back on it, I, I suppose it's very yeah might be a nice thing to look back on that you yeah. all played together. And Mammy and Mary wouldn't be ones for photos or anything. Right. If I didn't take a photo, we wouldn't have no photos, or <laughs> someone didn't give us a photo, so we wouldn't even have a picture of the three of us or not on yeah. playing together. But the main thing was playing the match and winning it. <laughs> <laughs> Very competitive, then, would you say? Yeah. Would are you competitive among yourselves? Like, would you be? Do you know? We wouldn't really. Would we? Do you have to break up many fights over the years. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of them. Plenty of them. I remember in my time at home now you know because there's sisters of mine played at home as well and uh, my father lord of mercy on him he'd be uh, sitting out uh, watching us playing and all and sure there's, there was never an evening but there'd be a row of some sort or other <laughs> you know because we all wanted to win mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this competitive yeah. streak has kept you going i suppose yeah yeah mm. uh, i was just going to say and, and una in 2010 was the next all ireland and that would be maybe a slightly an extra special one for you being the captain that year. Yeah, no, that was extra special. Um, I suppose JJ had come in and tried, like I was still one of the youngest on the team. And I suppose like they were kind of, you know, it was left to the clubs to pick the captain. So, and like we had won the championship in 2009. So then I was chosen to be captain. I suppose that it does make it extra special, you know, when you're captain. But um, and then to win was extra special. Yeah. As well, I was lucky that I was captain with the club team one as well, so we went to Pro Park. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of you would remember those kind of days. And what uh, was there anything in particular that season? There had been two thousand and eight and nine had gone past without winning one. And was there anything in particular that season that would have um, sparked suppose, anything? No, I suppose it was a whole new setup again, and you know, um, new trainery like Estella and her backroom team were brilliant. You know, they brought us on so much and. Mm. I think we kind of we celebrated probably a little too much in twenty in two thousand seven. Yeah. I suppose it was our first time ever winning, course, and yeah. like we're all young, we're all in college, and mm. like we were all just having great crack. Like you know, it was it was something that we really enjoyed. And sure, I think we went to Florida really quickly, and um, Rose Breen all remember they organised. We went to Florida on a team holiday. We were like, imagine going to Florida on a team holiday. Sure, yeah. we'd never heard of like. We probably of it. didn't. Yeah, we we went in April. And it was probably April too, too late too. when you're going to championships to be going on holiday, like, wasn't it? Yeah, but then that's way you know it's, there was a lot of teachers on the team, and you know you had to kind of mm. get one to suit everyone, but. I'd go in Florida, I wouldn't be complaining. No. <laughs> I'd go, or go in February, I mean, I wouldn't be complaining. I know. We went to Vegas on one too, it was good. Oh, wow. Fair play. So that win in 2010 was the start of a, a three in a row then, Mary, that obviously... Yeah, um, I suppose it was a very special bunch of girls. Um, should JJ now, he's very driven. Um, he'd be very competitive as well. Um, yeah, no, the three in a row was very special. Um, I think... We did regret, I do think 2008 and 2009, we did let, um, I suppose, it slip by. We probably didn't, we were very unlucky now in 2009. I think we played, was it Galway in the in semi-final and they got a goal at the very last yeah. second of the match. It was a little bit controversial with the timekeeping and that or something. Yes, yeah. so there was six or seven minutes of the play over. Anyway. Yeah, that, I do think. Was we, that that year? I can't remember. Yeah. Like not being arrogant or anything, but we were probably like we were good in those two years, but we just didn't get the look or you know, and then two thousand and ten I suppose the new approach, new management, new ideas, a refreshing the whole thing and I suppose that got us going as well. There was a strong intermediate team there at the time as well. Mm. Yeah. Was such a huge number at training, so there was always, you know, mm. competition for places and so the one on intermediate and senior. In was, one year. Yeah, yeah, that was you know, 2011. 2011. Yeah, yeah. like that'd be a fairly serious achievement to have the second team winning the second yeah. year. Yeah, really. Um, it drives everyone on then, I suppose, as well, like to for places as you Yeah, say, like we all team, like, train together and everything yeah. as well. So you know, if anyone was like um, putting a going hard at train, like mm. it was noticed and they were getting the call up to the senior panel and stuff. Mm. Yeah, but at that time too, um, the colleges, uh, the standard in the colleges was very good, and sure, Colosh de Breed won uh, all Ireland's at that. What year did they win? The all Ireland and for a lot of them, like they were, you know, the the featured on county teams mm. too. Mm. Yeah. 
we're feeding into the the teams like the county teams and everything mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and girls you have you both have you have to touch on it of course uh football yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just have to touch on that for a minute and <laughs> um, so you have a couple of football county medals as well peter when you do have well, we were trying to we were trying to work it out here with the help of Dominic Williams. But uh, <laughs> Clonie won five in the area in the era that you would have been playing. But I think you both might have missed one or something like that. Is that the theory? But you won maybe four, maybe five yeah. footballs as well. It must was it? Did you enjoy the football first of all? I have to say I loved football. I did too. Then. There was no. I always would have found growing up along like there would be a certain amount of pressure on you playing camogie. Yeah. And um, football, just go out and just. Do you know, I suppose, mm. express yourself and... There's no pressure on you yeah. if you actually enjoy it, so... Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, going to the match is not always great. And well, really I even remember you coming in, and I particularly remember Mary more so. I didn't, I think... Cause they were so were, quiet and shy. <laughs> <laughs> so shy. But um, you coming in, and it literally was like that. You had no... Like, you came in, and you were... You just seemed, com- you know, confident, but no pressure. Yeah. And you just played, and... I distinctly remember playing a match with you and I got knocked down or something and you came over and you were like, you're fine, but stay down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. No, I don't remember <laughs> that. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'd have to give a mention to the great uh, Tommy Brown. Yeah, um, Tommy. Tony. Um, Tommy's if, a great man, I suppose. If I the NFL ne- ever needed a recruiter or and Larry, of course, as well, and Tina and Peter. But if the NFL or the NBA ever needed a recruiter there was no better man than Tommy Brown <laughs> yeah. is that part for the, football is that part of the reason he ended up playing football for Clone E or was it just the closest team or was there some sort of an well actually the Shannon Leards would have been the closest yeah. Yeah. but I think there was such a rivalry between ourselves the, the Ireland and the Ibars at the time we couldn't dream of going to play with the Ibars <laughs> and even saying that we actually are very good friends with some of the girls from the Ibars like <laughs> I suppose but you would have played camogie with a lot of the well, Kate guys. and Mag and Bridget and Michelle and, all, and yeah. then playing football against them. But yeah, but so you would have played football with a lot of the Clonee or camogie with a lot of the Clonee girls. Yeah, like Josie it was and Caroline. Caroline. Caroline and Manny. Yeah, yeah. So Josie and Caroline won the team that won the yeah. Yeah. yeah, 2007, am I right? Yeah, yeah and, two and of them were, the last, the three in two, weren't it? No, Caroline actually was on 2007. Was Caroline, she went travelling then, didn't she? She went away, yeah. For yeah, no, Caroline was an unbelievable camogie player. Yeah, and football. And football. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Every sport, really. Yeah. And same with Josie as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. Josie Dwyer, so. um, but yeah, good times too. <laughs> yeah. And did it get to the stage then where you just had to make a decision that we're going to concentrate on one or... Yeah, well, well that, it wasn't for me really. It was my knees made that decision for me? I yeah. remember I came home from Australia. I was in Australia in twenty thirteen. Was it? I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was twenty thirteen. I went to Australia, played football, camogie, everything out there. Not a problem in the world. Came home and twenty fourteen. I think it was May twenty fourteen. I had to get surgery on my knees. And I think it was the sunshine. I keep. So I keep telling myself mm. it was the sunshine in Australia had new mm. bones and mm. it was there was no issues at all. But um. Yeah, no, I would have still loved to play football because I actually mm. really enjoyed football. Yeah. Whereas I just, I was clashing. Even the first year, I remember, like we got to the national league final, and I was in, um, Nolan Park. The first in two thousand seven, I remember having to play. I got to call during the week that I was starting in the football league final for Wexford, and I was, I was delighted, but I was. A bit raging as well because we're playing the camogie like playing two matches of one weekend is tough going mm. and then I was starting to I suppose the club scene was starting to clash particularly in Leinster when we won a few Owlard we're playing the same weekend as the football with Johnny even when we won our first club Leinster with Owlard um, I think we, we were got bet in five Leinster finals in a row or something and then the camogie was fixed for the Saturday and on the Sunday the football Myself, you weren't playing that year, but myself and Shelley Kyo and Keir Scallon were playing the Camogie on the Saturday. They had to turn around and go up to Leash and play the football Leinster Championship on the Sunday. Yeah. Thankfully, me and Shelley weren't driving, and Keir was sensible on driving. But you know that kind of, you know, and I think that match we ended up drawn, and it was put the replay was the following weekend, and we we're like, well, why couldn't they have it the following weekend anyway? Like, you know, yeah. they're go replay, so yeah. it wouldn't have clashed, but. It's kind of tough that way, but yeah. Yeah. I suppose they're under two separate entities. Nearly, they, there's very little communication, maybe at the time. 
Yeah. It's probably a little bit, bit better now, I think, maybe. Yeah, I don't know even whether it is that much better, to be honest, because you'd see inter-county players and, <laughs> like, wasn't it this year? There was a few kind of double-ups, wasn't there? Matches clashing, like, mm. Mm. Yeah. you know? Yeah, that's on the, inter yeah, the inter-county. Yeah. yeah. Was there ever any other sport for you, Margaret, or was it only Mogi? I, I played football, but um, we didn't have, there was no club. Uh, that you could play with, but I did like football, but um, I played badminton all right, mm. you know. It was badminton, I didn't really watch anything on the telly. <laughs> really? I, I was even killing her tonight that there's a soccer match on, and then <laughs> she's letting on to me into soccer, but yeah, she, call over to Mammy's, there'll be some match or boxing, it could be at on the telly. Yeah. And we say, yeah. give a name about the price of Sky, and we were like, well, sure, you have all the Sky sports, so <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> well, remember you were telling me yeah, about was, time yeah. running. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I love runs. Right. And um, I um, worked in DSB and there was an inter-business um, mile race uh, to be run in, in, I was running in Phoenix Park and <coughs> this fellow that worked with me, he was in a club in, in North County Dublin and he wanted me to join and all, but I was afraid I had to interfere with the, the camogie because I, you know, when I was playing camogie in Dublin at the time, like, but I, I, I ran in this race and I hadn't been training at all, like for, you know, the special training for running, like. And I went out anyhow and sure, I was doing pretty well. And this guy, he was urging me on all the time. It was top, some top runners like running in this race. And I ran and I, I finished about fifth in the race. But I'll never forget it. I, I got such a headache, I, I didn't know whether I was coming or going or... <laughs> I'd say the blood pressure was up in the morning <laughs> that day, <laughs> but uh, I, 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 it's just because I, I wasn't, uh, you know, geared like mm. far to, far to run or you know what I mean. Yeah. I, I, I hadn't um, been training special training like far running. But I, I, when your man told me to keep going, I, I, I did keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and Margaret, you're still heavily, heavily involved in the underage. In Irish, is that right? Well, I was up until very recently, mm. and um, but I I wouldn't be now really, and I'm gone mm. too old for all that. Mm. <laughs> well, they even have a, a tournament named after you now. How did that come about? I don't know. Sure, they decided that it's, it's generally are dead before they <laughs> <laughs> before they run they, they run any of those things. But it's, it's actually um, it's it's very successful. Mm. This last year was the first year, and the Shells won it last year, and they actually won it this year again. Um, Paul Hayes and uh, Dermot Bourne and and, um, and the late Aidan Morn. Aidan was only buried last week. He was a fantastic uh, man, a great club man, and um, it was uh, it was it's very it was very well run, and uh, I think all the clubs were. Um, really very pleased uh, with it. And it's for so under 14s, is it? Under 14s, yeah. yeah. So, um, Has that been going on a long time? Has it? No, it, last year was it the first year. The first year, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, it'll, it'll be there for a long time to come, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. It's great, like, for young girls, because at this time of the year, you know, the championship and the league and everything is over with. So, you know, mm. they were getting plenty of matches and plenty of training and all. So it was, it's, it's very good for them, especially at, you know, <coughs> that age, mm. you know, Absolutely. if not they're into something else. Mm. 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 We haven't really spoken very much about the, the Great Buffers Alley team that you were on. You won, was it four Club All-Irelands and whatever amount of county championships? Yeah, they were great sides, those uh, Buffers Alley teams. Uh, very, very dedicated like to the game and to some fantastic uh, players. And um, there was some great successes, you know, with them. Yeah. Who were the main rivals at the time in the county? Was there, were there many clubs at the time that would have been competitive or was it... There wouldn't have been that many uh, at all. There was the St. John's down here in Wexford. They were, you know, one of the big teams at that time. 
and um, it's a team from Adamstown, I think, and a few now, but um, there wouldn't have been that many teams, no, not in the county. Yeah. And um, yeah, so you, you managed to win, was it, I think it was four, four All Ireland's with Buffers Alley, was it? Or I think I have, yeah, four All Ireland's, yeah. Yeah. Can you remember who you beat in any of the finals oh, or Jenny. remember anything about them? <laughs> uh, well, one year we beat uh, Killer down, where was I think it was down in Killer. But um, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you, to be honest with you, now. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's great to have so much success that it blends in maybe <laughs> in, in the mind. <laughs> You're probably the same with a lot of the finals though. Would you be girls as well with winning yeah. 15 of... 15 county titles, like it might be hard to remember what happened in each year. You can maybe, you'd you remember, remember, you do remember a few. Mm. Like, it's back, we were playing the Ibers for years and years, and they were always beating us. I think it was a five county finals in a row or something. And you remember like, your first, and then I remember one, oh my god, I had a stinker. <laughs> and I went to a draw, and then I remember I was like so disappointed in my performance, and I suppose it did push me on the next day. You know, it's kind of funny what you do remember. We played a lot of different teams over the years. Like Mona Gear would have been yeah. in one county final, and I would say Martins would have been back. Was it two thousand and eight or yeah. back years ago? The Martins and they, then the Martins weren't in the county final for a few years. You know, yeah. Rat Newer were there, and um, again even this year at Glen Barn Town, it's kind of you know it's been different opposition the last few years. And you could never, even though like we have fifteen. Like county titles, there was never one year that you could be going into final and thinking, "Oh God, we're guaranteed this." You can never take any of them, like you know. You never guaranteed that. Yeah, I think. Like we were always pushed to, I suppose. Because even this year yeah. now, uh, <clears throat> Glen Marntown, you know, would have pushed yeah. to the yeah. limit. But I suppose yeah. over the years we've after seen a lot too. Like you know, we were lucky. We had a great bunch of girls. You know, young girls come up. I suppose the same time, but like mm. you know, even like you know, like the Martins and like the Martins that won three county titles in a row, and everyone was saying they're going to be there for years. But like we we have seen over the years, there's some of your best players could go traveling. Girls had babies, injuries, you know, and... injuries. Like you can never take that for granted. You never know who's going to be there next year. So like, I suppose that's why I suppose you have to make the best yeah. of it when you're there. Mm. You know. Would there be one of the wins that would be more sort of when you're looking back on it, be more? I don't know how's the word, satisfying than uh, than any of the others. Yeah, right. I think um, I remember it was a in the Martins back um, whatever year that was. I was only after finishing school, and I remember we were playing. Who I don't even know who we were playing, but I remember I had my debs on it on the Friday night, and to say the semi final was a Saturday or something. And now we are, the semi final was maybe the debut on the Wednesday or Thursday night. And her so couldn't we have gone to the Red Cow and you know now everything's <laughs> so going. We're talking the morning breakfast. Yeah, yeah. and we were I think we were playing around New York actually in the semi final that weekend. And Mum was like, oh yeah, no, I'll go up and pick you up early. And I was kind of like, oh god, yeah, great. <laughs> maybe had your eighth day. It's all your friends going debs and you know was everything. Everyone's gonna be talking about it for a long time after. Mm. But we were playing. I think it was Leash in the county minor the weekend before and should I break my wrist I got hit on the wrist and I had to go to the hospital end up in a cast now so I was like it was like mommy can't come picking up now there's no point <laughs> so I couldn't play but then I ended up being back for the final that year so I could you know something like that you remember, remember yeah. um I suppose um 2020 that county final um we had lost I suppose I suppose we would have been very successful prior to that and then we had lost the county final, the two previous ones, um, to the Martins. Um, the three, wasn't it? Yeah, and then we had lost the semi final, oh. you know, three years prior. So three years we were kind of knocking on the door. Everyone was saying we're a finished team, we were old. And then I suppose that year we were with clean. Um, I suppose we won all, We actually won no, all our just... matches up to the county final. Um, again, because of COVID, there was no spectators let in. And I don't think I'll ever forget this, but even in the warm up, like I'm usually one of those, I'm the one that's really quiet and focused for matches. But I remember looking out the gate and 
who would I see standing there on a Phil Redmond? And about Phil. And you, like, even like my husband couldn't even come to the game because there was no spectators. And who was standing there, Phil? And he was kind of prowling around. And then I think the secretary looked, she was looking one way, and Phil came in and he got to see it. And it was really special because Phil would never have missed the count final of ours. And I did what he'd be always up at the pitches, too. yeah. You know, that match was like training teams. and everything, he'd yeah. Be there, wouldn't and he? do you remember me, you going to get the cup and Mary seen Phil and I think Peggy Kelly and Sean were oh God, they know. were there as well. And we were all taking the piss out of her for a long time after because she was like, Oh, Phil, hide! <laughs> like, and I have to get the cup, and it was just really funny, yeah. But I think that was very, you know, it was something that you'll always remember because there was no spectators, no supporters. And I suppose the fact that Phil got into that match and it was his last kind of final because like he passed away shortly after, wasn't it? Mm. Do you know, so it was really, I suppose, nice and um, fitting the Phil that he got to come in and got to celebrate with us. But I suppose it was special because we had lost the three previous years. Everyone had us written off. And I suppose the likes of myself, um, Ursula, Karen, I suppose we thought we'd never get back in that position of winning the county final and it was great that so we did and particularly in the I suppose the way you know it was in Belfield that day it was you got to come in mummy but mm. there wasn't too many there was people on ladders yeah. at the walls uh-huh. yeah so it's something I'm going to remember anyway do you know it does kind of make that final stand out compared to the rest of the finals and, and not only did you manage to win come back after being written off as you say you managed to win Leinster and then followed up with an All Ireland. I know there was a big gap between them, yeah. as we mentioned earlier, but like that must have been a really special thing to manage to do again. We even, I think, the, um, we won the twenty twenty one. Then you know, like last September, and then like there was no focus on Leinster or nothing. It was just all on winning Wexford, and that's all anyone cared about. And then like you know, each week we were out every week, so you didn't even have time to think of who we were playing. And I remember, we, I remember we played um, Schlock Neil in an Irish semi final. We kind of like. Oh God, Stacey's wedding is next Saturday. Like we were after winning and beating Schlock Neil. Mm. And uh, we were, Stacey's wedding was Friday and we were like, the alert was on Saturday. But like up to that, because we were playing every weekend, you, you, nothing was guaranteed. So you mm. didn't even think about anything. And then mm. It was only until after it. You kind of think it was mad, like the preparations we had. And like Stacey turned up to training the night before. She was getting married on a Friday and she had training on Thursday night. We were like, you are mad. <laughs> you know, and think back on things like that. It's yeah, she played after her wedding. Yeah, she, she got, got played a match, match in Northern yeah. Ireland. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's pretty incredible. Um, will we do our little? Yeah, uh, have a little um, <laughs> little quiz. <laughs> little quiz for you here now, and you can you can join in here, Margaret, now as well. Now you'll have to name and shame some of your own teammates. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and you can. Uh, Give an answer each or confer, whichever. Okay, so the toughest opponent from your own teams. So we'll say from school, Colossal Bridge, Owlert and Wexford, we'll say. So your toughest opponent, who would your own toughest opponent be? Who would you hate to mark or mark you? We knew you better say Mary. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> <I'm your daughter. laughs> I would never put us on each other. Fight and fight. <laughs> Even in training, you couldn't put them on each other because there'd be nothing on your own. Mary be so, she'd be very competitive. If I score on her, like, it'd be World War II is going to end. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is there someone really that tough that you... Um, I suppose in... like. It's ca- school camogie I wouldn't even really remember. Mm. That's a very long No, but just ago. even one one person from any of those um, teams. A Wexford team or Noni Lampard and Lockie were always tough in the backs to mark and because when you guys say the Wexford uh, Barry still actually jeers me about Trey's Mark catching a ball over me in Grove Park. I was like, all right, was like, yeah, you are too. <laughs> Making a show of me. <laughs> and yours, Mary? Um, I suppose, like, I would have marked Jem O'Connor and Trey's Mark, two the best. Um, I suppose they were two of the best. I, I think you had Trey's one year and I had her the next year because she went from centre back to centre forward, or I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so your teammate most likely always to be late. Karen Ackerson. Eve O'Connor too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Most likely to get sent off. 
Um, I took I took a red card for Keir Story in football one year <laughs> <laughs> in the school. Um, and how are two? For pulling loosely, I might go a Karen. <laughs> yeah. Um, most likely to go missing on a night out. Leanne Olin. Yeah, Leanne. I give Leanne that. Okay, the best trainer, or for most folk, you know, best in training, like. Um, like committed by yeah, yeah. Um, like focused. It's not training. pure story anyway. <laughs> no, Shalene. Shalene stays easily. Worst trainer. Kira story. <laughs> well, I'd probably be there with Kira, so that one was that. Okay, uh, your most skillful teammate. Um, Arsla. Yeah. Okay. Um, coaches or managers pet. Colin. Well, obviously, Shelley was. He was married. No, <laughs> Colin actually told us one night that he loved everyone, so. <laughs> um, Shelley was Colin's pet. <laughs> I'm trying to think back now, County. JJ. Who was JJ's pet? Did he have a pet? I wouldn't say he was a bit of time. Okay, um. From your own club then, I suppose, um, Star of the Future, someone to watch. Um, Coming up through the underage ranks, maybe. Even looking at the under-14 tournament yeah. last mm-hmm. week, um, Katie Rose, she's a cornerback on the senior team, her younger sister, centre-back Anna. Yeah, Anna's very good. Mm-hmm. You know, looking at her and... Cueva Moore is another. Cueva Moore, yeah. And uh, Molly. Molly Martin, Martin and Claude. And Claude um, Byrne. Claude Byrne. They're they're very promising yeah. young players. Yeah. It's lovely to see you know when you see younger players that you're picking them out at matches and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So and you know I that suppose that Brona like. Kenny as well. She's a member of our senior band. She's a young girl. Sarah, yeah. Yeah. she's yeah. promising. Sarah, Sarah Welsh is probably her. just need to get a bit of confidence in themselves, but it mm. will be promising for our club anyway. Brilliant. Um, okay, best dressed or best turned out teammate. Someone who's always done up. God, an eight car and you wouldn't. It was the coldest night in the year, and she came training in a little sleeveless <laughs> top. We were all. They done them singing yeah, to summer. We're, we're like, like alright, me. Um, are you talking about now at training, or are you talking about just in general? No, just in general. No, well, at training, yeah, I suppose, and matches and right, stuff. You'd have the fake tan done and the hair done. And the... I'm saying to everyone. <laughs> um, okay, only a few more then. Um, Best party piece from a teammate that you've ever seen? Do anyone have a good party piece? Um, you shouldn't know because you've had plenty of parties. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose... Don't think of. There's a few members you wouldn't mind going partying with over the years. Um, I suppose Mags Darcy, Kay Kelly and Bridget Carn. I'd say they're party pieces you couldn't... You couldn't say him now. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the singer of the group? Who's the one that'll always get up to sing or start to There's sing? There's a lot who'll get up and sing, but they can't sing. <laughs> Including <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Pot kettle here. Um, a few drinks now, you think you can sing, you can do anything. So yeah. but then there is a few that can actually sing. Yeah. Um, Karen and the Atkinson's there. Yeah, right? Karen and Colleen are really good singers. and Diane Ryan was a lovely yeah, singer. Yeah, Diane was as well. And then leads up nicely on to best teammate to cover up a hangover. Oh. Kira's story. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Kira. <laughs> <laughs> Most embarrassing moment playing sport. Just any sport. Uh, or, or um, sorry, there's another part to that. Um, or funniest thing that you've seen happen to a teammate. Like, I have an embarrassment for you as well. <laughs> remember up in, I think it was awfully playing a championship match and Mary's boot went and I think the whole oh, soul... Oh, John, <laughs> tell the story. The whole soul went off the boot. And I think it was Bridget Moore no, came out. Yeah, Bridget came out and don't start, don't say anything. <laughs> she kept, no, it was in, we're playing golf waves in the championship. In some match, I anyway. mean. Bridget comes out and there was actually a good crowd at the match and she, she kept shouting, is anyone a size? So and so, size five, Mary. <laughs> I was like, but dude, you stop shouting the size of my shoot. That was the funny. same happened to me. I think it was 
Um, you ran into a goal actually in Galway as well. Remember that? Oh, yeah. The goal was actually off the pitch, and Una had the ball. <laughs> I don't know how she ended up, but she literally remember that. Oh, yeah, it was a small goal. I'm kind of got in my way. Mm. <laughs> On the, the sideline, off the pitch. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. Um. Any superstitions? I think they used to be really super. I think she had me superstitious, like, and then she kind of had Kira superstitious. Right, as in, yeah. we used to have to eat spaghetti bolognese every night <laughs> before our match. Oh. And, like, Kira would have to come over just for spaghetti bolognese before a match. But I think as we kind of got older, I she, still have spaghetti bolognese for a match. <laughs> I wouldn't. I could eat. I think it was before I came to find last year. I had taco fries. <laughs> She's making yeah. taco, and they were giving me grueling. Well, I always had to sit in one particular position in the dressing room. Oh, in Ireland, oh my god, it's terrible. Um, for any match, we have a meeting two nights beforehand, but like everyone has their positions. And no, I think it's the older ones, as in Mary and Ursula Karen, and no, everyone does. The older ones, they would use would have been more so on. Yeah. This season and kind of everyone else kind of fell in then. That you better dare not go into that corner. Yeah, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I know. God help the poor young girls. And <laughs> um, teammate, you uh, teammate most fond of selfie. Kira, I give her that. Una. <laughs> <laughs> and most Venus as well. Do you know what I mean? Uh, no. <laughs> um, who? This for all of you, I suppose. And who would you who would cons, who would you consider the greatest sportsman or woman, past or present? I'd go with Katie Taylor. Sonia I Sullivan. I just loved her. Yeah, yeah. Grown up along. Probably Katie Taylor. Or hmm. You'd feel soccer. This woman's a soccer. She loves Messi. Messi. Oh my god. Uh, he okay, has a Messi yeah. or Ronaldo. Messi. <laughs> so I go with one no. male then as well. So. <laughs> Do you... I love Roy Keane. Yeah. Um, male. I you'd have to like his directness anyhow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd say either like a Henry Scheffler, or T. J. Reid. Mm. Very good. Okay, and this is a, could be a controversial one. If you could draft or coax um any player to transfer from another Wexford club to Owlert, who would it be? In Camogie or in Harlan? <laughs> Both. Come on, game it. Say come on, Um, you answer this one, Mike. No, you go. <laughs> Take your pick. You had a pick. If you had a pick to bring anyone in, I suppose Kate Kelly. If you could rewind the years of you, mm. you'd yeah. definitely go for Kate. Anyway, you'd have her on any team. Um, Kate or Nolan Lambert. Yeah. Catherine O'Loughlin was another yeah. great player. That's me done now. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> well, we're, we're nearly done, but there's a couple more things just I want to ask you about. Um, personal accolades. You both you both have three All Stars. I'm not sure where they doing All Stars uh, when you were playing Margaret, but you were named on the team of the century. Yeah. That must have been a very proud moment. It was, but then. They, those things, I suppose they are nice to get, like, but they're only some people's opinion, like, of, you know, uh, you know, of you, like, mm. because I think even with these all stars, like, you know, there's people get all stars, and um, and these people are unfortunate, maybe it would be, you know, um deserving of all stars and wouldn't get them at all mm. so uh, i don't know I, I i wouldn't take them awful seriously yet really to be honest with you mm. it was nice to get on the team of the century but you know it, it would, uh, i wouldn't take it awful serious either yeah <laughs> would you have the same view of all stars now or would it be yeah even like this year vicky wall i oh was actually just thinking that like I know it's ladies football, but imagine like she didn't get an all star, and like if you were playing Mead, who would you be put Mark and like who be, would you be watching? It'd be Vicky Wall really, but um, like I suppose I think the memories that we have is of winning it's not from your own personal, you know, mm. and the crack that was yeah. had at the banquets and mm. your teammates because there's a lot of really good girls you've played with over the years and they would have got little recognition. You know as well, and you know to be every bit as good as others. Yeah, I I remember in my time, and I always thought it was awful that 
that <coughs> uh, didn't happen to her was um, uh, Lily Parle. She was Lily. Uh, she played with the club down here in Wexford, and she was she was a brilliant player, but she never won in All Ireland. <coughs> you know because Wexford hadn't made a breakthrough at the time, and then she had retired. You wouldn't remember that, but she, you know she was she was a fantastic player. And really she fantastic. just came along at the wrong time. She was, well, yeah. she was there at the wrong, yeah. the wrong mm. time, I suppose you could say, but mm. she could yeah. play in any position. Mm. I suppose that happens to so many yeah. well, she amazing is one. sports people who, mm. with any other county, they could have been with another county and they could have six or seven yeah. All-Irelands. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, it is. But it's hard to... And the, are, there, are there still more chapters to be written? Oh, God. Who knows? There's <laughs> <laughs> 15 the magic number? 20? No, I don't know. <laughs> never see you anymore. Anyway. Never see you bring and Yeah. yeah. Take every day as it comes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try not to let her retire anyway, and I'll, I'll go back if she goes back. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mary, you still look as fit as a fiddle anyway, so you don't need to retire. Oh, no, it's just, I suppose, when you have. Two children, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're commuting a bit, and then I would you like to... You are way up in the hills, aren't you? Yes, I'm halfway to Dublin. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, North Wexford, and Kyle and Ian, and... Oh, you didn't worry about that. I mind the children. <laughs> <laughs> train them away. She's not letting you retire either. No, no. <laughs> I know, because I want to start doing other things as well. Like, you know, there's other sports I'd love to start and play, mm. you know. Mm. As I said, camogie is a big commitment, and... If I was, like, even this year, Colin when, and Kevin, when I came back, because I didn't think when we lost all Ireland in Crow Park, I didn't think I'd be back. And he was saying, like, oh, only, like, if you make two trains a week, but you know yourself, if you want to be performing to your best, you, you'll go train. And mm-hmm. I, like, mm-hmm. so I didn't miss any to train. And, like, I was there three times a week. But it is a big commitment. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, when you're working full time as well, it's tough going. The mm. Teachers do have the summer off. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think you'd ever be able to, like, after playing at such a high level for so long, could you take a step back? Would you find it very hard to take a step back, you know, and play maybe at a lower level or whatever? It, or would it just be, like... No, I'd like, to be honest, like, if I was going to... I'd rather, when I can, if I was going to continue playing, play at high Heist. level, yeah. yeah. Or not leave a few years and then do, do you know? Yeah, yeah. But... Oh. And what about yourself, Una? Hope to be back. Yeah, um, let's see. Like I'm not saying I'm retired or anything, so on. Yeah. So let's see. When's the baby In May. May. Oh, In May, very good. so yeah. it'll give me plenty of time to be back if I want yeah. to be back. Well timed as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other than I don't think it was well timed the last few weeks, and I missed the Leinster Championship, but sure. There's more to life than come out, just come over. How, how did you hide that? How did you hide that from the Oh, don't you? talk to me. I told <laughs> Mary knew all along, and I was like, you know, I was allowed to play. It wasn't as if I was taking up something new, so I just mm. continued playing. And mm. I suppose it was to go on out after matches was the real killer. I had mm. <laughs> this one on duty going to the bathroom and emptying the drink that's and putting water you know, into it. <laughs> that's what you have, it's, it's um, bad to say, but that's what you have to do. Like, you're trying to hide it, you know. Mm. People know. Yeah, but it's used. funny because Colin actually noticed that. Said there, I had a game. There's one. <laughs> He's seen one. I was going to the bathroom. And, mm-hmm. Um, should I eat the car park this side? And he's like, "Mary, come on, we go home." I mean, he never goes home first, so that's how yeah. she was. <laughs> the cops on. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Part of being a successful team is having a good group or groups coming along together at the same time. Would it be anything that you'd pinpoint that that happened or was it a little bit just a fluke of the way the population was at the time? Or I think it was just a lot of um, people, you know, obviously born around that same age. Like, there was maybe a few years between Mary and Ursula and then there was, you know, every year there was someone. And I suppose even speaking into our senior club team, every year since we started winning, there was always one or two players coming on you know, each year and like even now, like Brona and Sarah, they're coming on, like, you know, pushing for places and I think every year there was kind of I think we we're very lucky that you know, it was kind of a group of girls, I suppose, came along that were committed, they were determined mm. and I think that's probably the recipe to success, like, you know I think too and maybe I shouldn't be saying this but like, you have GA families, 
and like if parents are you know so much uh, interested in the games like they'll bring their children along and you know and they'll encourage them and like yeah. I think Sparkling that interest. that's yeah. uh, I think you know forms the interest and I think that has an awful lot to do with it because even with Buffers Alley now like there'd be families down there fantastic families like and they'd live and die for the game and I think that's uh, you know where where it all stems from really and the success that you would have had with Camogie teams in your club would have coincided with success that the men had at the same time yeah but I actually yeah, no, did yeah the well Senior hurlers were actually winning at the same kind of time as us, and you remember even when they won their first Leinster. The first we sure. um, we the county final it was a Kiro's captain, but went to a replay in Algate, and it was on the same day as the hurling final in Mex Park. So I think that was on early that morning, and. But then I suppose when we were growing up along, like when we were winning on our underage, the boys were always winning as well. Yeah, sure. They won yeah. a failure, uh, in the, in the same year. Right. Yeah. The boys won the fail in, in Harlan yeah. and the girls won it in Camogie. Like, yeah. like we're all, so. I suppose, a lot of, I suppose there would have been a lot of connections, brothers, cousins, you know. So that kind of does stem back to your, you know, mm. the whole GA families. Mm. Plus, like, there was always someone at the pitch. If you went to the pitch, you know, growing mm. up along, there was always someone up there hurling or playing. Yeah. But like, this was, mm. you put that down to the parents, they were always bringing them to the pitch, so there was... And even to back to the schools, you probably yeah. had really yeah. good, um, to have good record league. Yeah, yeah. Mini, mini sevens. Mini sevens and, and they used to be good with the record or the mini sevens because Eilert used to play the Wallach and oh, we oh. we played them in many a mini sevens final. So it was then you're going back to normal to training together, yeah. to play together. But I suppose at that age you didn't really understand, you know. Yeah. But obviously, like we were in Eilert and we wanted to win, and mm. it's funny when you look back at it now. Yeah, yeah, it sort of creates a culture within a place as well, Margaret, doesn't it? When you have the Camogie team going well, you have the men's team going well, everything seems to be yeah, a rising tide lifts all boats, as they say. Yeah, well, a lot depends on, on the family, uh, you know, the parents, I think. Because hmm. if you have parents that are interested, then make sure that their, their, ch their children will be at the pitch, you know, because there'll be some now and... <coughs> maybe they'd be maybe bring them to the pitch all right but they'd be a bit lukewarm about it and might come today and not tomorrow like the you don't win calls. anything that way right? <laughs> the phone call she used to get with excuses yeah and you would know what she'd say to them <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh you get I, I did get you'd be getting calls and is there training on tonight <laughs> I got so fed up with one particular stage I said yeah I said even if there's a foot of snow on the ground I told him I said we are playing, <laughs> so uh, they stopped uh, ringing then, because they knew, because like, if you wanted to get to the top, you have to put it into it, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, I'm sure that there are plenty of people across the county and maybe further afield will have enjoyed listening to the trivia this evening, and uh, we'd mm -hmm. like you, to thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. On the Couch is sponsored by Murphy's Furniture, who've been supporters of Bikes for GA for many years. Murphy's have two shops in Wexford, one in Gorey and one in Wexford Town. Along with a huge range of furniture, sofas, beds and mattresses, Murphy's are now launching their carpet and flooring ranges across their five shops this December. They also have stores in Carlow, Nace and Dublin. Anthony and Nikki Murphy are proud supporters of Wexford GA and are delighted to now offer flooring to the people of Wexford 